All right, average values problems are actually pretty easy. Let's take a look at these. Um, the definition goes like this. You want to find the average value of a function on a closed interval from A to B. Now the definition will wind up being this, but what you've got, let's take a look at it here. You've got a function f of x, which is right here, so this would be f of x. Now you want to find it on the interval from A to B, so starting from here and ending here. So from A to B. So if you go straight up from here and straight up from B, uh, what you'll actually find will be the area under this curve. So if you find the integral, which is the top part up here, uh, so you want the integral from A to B, which will give you this area under the curve. Now, once you've got the area, all the average value is, it's just the area under the curve divided by the width of the interval. So you can kind of think of it like this. It really turns out to just be the area divided by the width of the interval. So the width of the interval. So kind of a two-step process. First of all, find the area divided by the width of the interval, and you'll have the average value. And let's take a look at a couple of examples now. Okay, before we start a calculus example, let's take a look at just something that you've been doing forever uh, and show you how this thing works. And suppose you had this. You took five test scores, and you wanted to find what was your average score on the test. Well, you've been doing this forever, so you know how to do this. Add the five scores up to get the sum, and then divide by the number of tests, and you'll have your average. So you're, suppose you made a 75, an 80, a 90, a 75, and a 90. Now, if you added all these together, you would come up with the following. Uh, I'll add them all up, and this will turn out to be 410. So what this is, this is the sum of all your scores. So you sum them all up to start with. Then to find the average, you know what to do. Go ahead and divide it by the number of tests, which would be 5. Well, 410 divided by 5 gives you an 82. And what this is, this is your average score. So that's going to be the average score on the test. So the sum of all the tests divided by the number of tests. Now, if you look at it graphically, here's kind of what it looks like, and this is how it relates to calculus. If Here are your, your five tests, so test 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and your scores were 75, 80, 90, 75, and 90. Now, you can kind of think of this thing as being a function. We'll go ahead and draw a line through it. It's as if it had a function that went through it, something like this right here. It goes through here, up to here, touches about right there, kind of comes down, touches, and goes up something like this. Now, whenever you find an integral, if you're finding the integral of that thing, you're actually finding the area down here. So you, it would be as if you're finding this area all down in here. So when you sum them all up, that in this case, that's going to be equal to the 410. That's where the 410 comes from. So what you have would be 410, and that's going to be uh, the sum. Now, this goes from 0 to 5, so the integral here goes from 0 to 5. So in this case, a would be equal to 0, and b would be equal to 5. So if you take the 410 and divide it by b minus a, in this case it would be 410 divided by 5 minus 0, which gives you the 410 divided by 5, which gives you the 82. So if you look at it from a non-calculus standpoint, this is what it is. Add up the test scores, get the sum, divided by 5. If you looked at it from a calculus point of view, it's the accumulated area under the curve divided by the width of the interval. So again, 410 divided by 5, you'll get the same answer. So in both cases, the average is 82. Now visually, let's put a line across there and see what this thing would look like. Uh, the average score is an 82, so you've got an 82 right here. So if you came right across here at an 82 and put a horizontal line all the way across the graph, that graph right there, that horizontal line, gives you your average score. So it would be like you made an 82 on five consecutive tests. Okay, now with that out of the way, let's take a look at our first calculus example. And the problems will look something like this. They're going to say, find 
the average value of a function on a closed interval, in this case it's from 1 to 4. So what we've got is this, f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 2x. The function would look something like this if you graphed it. And we want to find the average value on the interval from 1 to 4. So this is a uh, right here, and this is b right here. So on your graph, this is a, and this is b. So we want to go from a to b. Now, the first step is going to be to do what we did before. I'll go ahead and uh, put a vertical line here and put another vertical line right here. And I want to find this area in here. Well, that area is the integral, so kind of a two-step process here, and we'll go ahead and do it in two steps. Step number one, so step one, is to find the integral from 1 to 4 of 3x squared minus 2x. And when you find that, that's going to give you the area under this curve. Well, what that's going to be equal to would be 3, and then the antiderivative of this would be x cubed divided by 3 minus 2 times x squared divided by 2. And you want to evaluate that from 1 to 4. <clears throat> now in this case, the 3's cancel out, so we can cancel out those 3's, and also the 2's cancel out. That'll cancel out. So we'll go ahead and cancel both those out, and that's going to get you to simplify it. That will be x cubed minus x squared evaluated from 1 to 4. Uh, just go ahead and find that antiderivative and evaluate it. So first of all, I'll go ahead and plug in the 4. So 4 cubed minus 4 squared. Then plug in the bottom number. 1 cubed minus 1 squared. Okay, this will turn out to be 64 minus... 16 minus 1 minus 1. And that will turn out to be 64 minus 16 will be 48 <clears throat> minus 1 minus 1 will be 0. <clears throat> so you get 48. <clears throat> now this is not the answer. What this is, this is <clears throat> the area under that curve. So the area under the curve is 48, and you're halfway through the problem. Now you have to go to the second step, which is to divide it by the, the uh, width of the interval. So we'll do step two. And what step two is, is to take the 48 and divide it by <clears throat> b minus a. So in this case, it'll be 4 minus 1. So that's going to give you 48 divided by 3, which is going to give you 16, and that's the actual answer. That's the average value on this thing. So what this is, this is the average value of the function on the interval. So average value. value. Again, graphically, what it would look like, let's just draw a quick picture here, is you went up to about 16, which would be on this graph about right here, and went straight across here, uh, it would look like this. It is uh, this function on the interval from 1 to 4 has an average value of 16. So there is a non-trig example. Uh, let's take a look at a trig example now. All right. What this one says is find the average value of a function f of x is equal to the sine of x on the interval from pi divided by 4 to 3 pi divided by 2. Now, if you were to graph it, this is what it would look like. Uh, there's a graph of sine wave. Um, you've got the interval from pi divided by 4, which starts right here and goes up. And you're going to go to 3 pi divided by 2, which starts right here and goes down. So what you come up with is this area here, which is going to be positive, and this little area down here, which is going to be negative. Now, since there's more above than there is below, the final answer should be positive, but what would happen if you average those together? 
So let's go ahead and find it. We use exactly the same step that we did before. So a two-step process. First of all, find the integral. So step number one, find the integral of this function between here and here. So that's going to be uh, the integral from pi divided by 4 to 3 pi divided by 2 of the sine of x, and that'll give us the area. So the antiderivative of the sine is the negative of the cosine, and you're going to evaluate this from pi divided by 4 to 3 pi divided by 2. So just like you've always done, go ahead and plug in the top number. So that's going to be the negative of the cosine of 3 pi divided by 2 minus the negative of the cosine of pi divided by 4. Now, like we've done on some of the other videos, sometimes the hardest part of the problem is figuring out what the trig functions are. So let's take a quick look at those, and I'll draw a picture of them just to kind of see here. First of all, I'm going to draw a picture of a 3 pi divided by 2 angle. So it'll look something like this. Here's, I'll put a circle on here. So 3 pi divided by 2 goes from here all the way around to right there. And there is 3 pi divided by 2. Well, the cosine of a 3 pi divided by 2 angle is 0. Then I've got minus the negative. Now I've got a pi divided by 4 angle, so let's draw a picture of that one. So what a pi divided by 4 angle looks like is this right here. There's a circle. Uh, so it's a 45 degree angle, so it's going to look like this right here. We'll have, there is pi divided by 4. Now remember from your special angles, this is 1, 1, and the square root of 2. So the cosine is x over r. In this case, it would be 1 over square root of 2. So this is going to be 1 over the square root of 2 right here. Now what you've got, this one's 0. Two negatives make a positive, so the integral actually turns out to be 1 over the square root of 2. So what this is, now this is not the final answer, this is the, the area uh, between the function and the x-axis. So you're halfway through the problem. That's the integral. Now to find the average value, you have to take that answer and divide it by the width of the integral. So let's try that. We'll go on to step two. So we'll put it right here. So step two is the integral, which is 1 over the square root of 2 divided by the width of the integral, which is, uh, now this is a and this is b. So you're going to go from a to b. You want that area right there. There's a and there's b. So it's b minus a, so it'll be 3 pi divided by 2 minus, and this one's going to be pi, pi divided by 4. Uh, put pi divided by 4. Now, this is just a matter of getting the fraction straightened out. This one is over 4. You've got to get this one over 4. So what I'll do is multiply this one by 2 over 2. And what that's going to give me would be this. I've got 1 over the square root of 2 divided by... Now, this turns into 2 times 3. This would be 6 pi divided by 4 minus 1 pi divided by 4. So that gets me to 1 over the square root of 2 divided by, now 6 minus 1 would be 5 pi divided by 4. And we'll continue down here. Uh, you've got a fraction divided by a fraction, so take this one, turn it upside down, change the multiplication. So this will become 1 over the square root of 2, there's the numerator, and then turn the denominator upside down, so 4 over 5 pi. And if you multiply all that together, you wind up with 4 over, and 
we'll kind of move these numbers out in front. This would be 5 times the square root of 2 times pi. And what this is, this is the average value. So that right there is going to be the final answer. <clears throat> That's going to be the average value. Now, if you stuck that on a calculator, it would actually turn out to be about 0.18. So what this is, I'll do it in red where it stands out here, this is the exact answer, and that's generally what you want, but if you just wanted to check it and see how it works out, it'd be about 0.18. Now, visually, what that means is, we'll go back up here again, uh, here is 1, here is minus 1, so 0.18 would be about right here. And if you drew a horizontal line all the way across this thing, uh, that horizontal line represents the average value between pi divided by 4 and 3 pi divided by 2. So again, your two steps are step 1, uh, find the integral, and that's this answer right here. Then take this answer and move it up to the top, and divide it by b minus a, and go through the math, and you got it. So step two is to divide by the width of the interval. And there's a couple of examples of average value problems. So those, I don't think, will cause you much trouble.